in this episode tonight. Coming up, it's more chat about football. Hello! Hello! Um, welcome. More enthusiasm, please. Hello. And what go. really helps, Chuck, is when I turn the volume up on the headphones. Excellent. There you go. Um, so uh, here we are again. This is Corbett Town TV. You can find us on the YouTube channel. And if you do like us, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification button. So you'll always be aware of us because how many episodes? What are we at to Michael now? Chuck, this is episode number 50. And not out! Bat into the number four. So um, more people watch this and enjoy it and believe it than most of the viewers on GB News. Do they really? Yeah. It's all lies on there. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even going to say allegedly, because quite frankly, it's all lies. Okay. Right, anyway, I'm I, not I, going I, now. I, I, I seem distant from you today, Michael, distant. Yeah, yeah, well... Do you know um, why? Why is that? That's because of Alan Strickland. Alan Strickland? Yeah, because he wants to see his advert. Oh. He and, says, uh, he said to me, you're so large, Chucky, that I can't see my advert. Didn't Eugene say the, say the similar thing? He might have done. Um, but, um, yeah, there you go. Alan Strickland. Have it. And also, Simpson West. Obviously, Simpson West come to the most games now, don't they? People from Simpson West. And uh, they sponsor us. Fast Line Group. I haven't got a clue who they are, but I hope they paid their bill. Uh, same as Sims and Rapid Recovery. Anyway, where should we start? Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Ladies oh. had a game called off. Oh, again? Yeah, again. Is that because it's been a bit wet? Yeah, I think the Daventry game, the uh, pitch was a bit wet, wasn't it? But... Um, there's me heading straight off into ladies. I think we should really start with the first team and what a great performance it was over at Harbour. Absolutely nullified them. And um, we're really unlucky. If it wasn't for the Harbour keeper, we should have won that game. I think so. You know, it was a one-all draw at Harbour Town. And uh, before we go any further, Michael, I need to say it was a little bit disconcerting for when I got there because... Um, the man at the desk, the man at the front desk at the gate, he says, are you black and white or yellow? And I was, <laughs> right? And I was wearing my Spurs shirt. So I said Tottenham. And um, he went, oh, have you got a ticket? And I went, no. No, I said. Because I didn't have a ticket. I was on the list. Uh, anyway, I went to the door where the list was and everybody knew my name. And it was a little bit weird because that's how it happened for the rest of the game. And uh, I've got to get, say a special shout out to the um, inclusivity and diversity champion at Market Harbour Town. That's Harbour Town to them. Um, Rosie, who came and sat with me for most of the game. And, um, you know, we don't have somebody like that at Steel Park. And I think it's nice that they've, they've introduced somebody like that to do the work there within the ground and look after people. When I was there, she used to call me the BFG. The G. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You're a lovely, lovely girl. Absolutely so, um, smashing. Yeah. And uh, it just shows that, obviously, a football club is a family and is for the community. And I think, um, all um, joking aside, uh, they have a very professional football club at Harbour Town. So there you go. Didn't expect that, did you? I did expect that, actually. I did, yeah. I mean, I think it was, uh, you know, as for people knowing you, well, you know, if you sit on here for 50 episodes <laughs> and go on about Market Harbour Town and fingers for carrots for I, fingers... Oh, I think, and, I think and, that, was, that, was, that wasn't Market Harbour. That was Spalding. <laughs> and all sorts of things, you know. They're going to know you, aren't they? Yeah, they? yeah, yeah. Um, I, but, yeah, it was, um, it was well attended. It was a good game of football. It was, um, what's the word? It was a challenge for both teams and everybody was safe at the end of it. No trouble. No trouble. No, that I heard of, no, no trouble at all. And I think the organisation and everything was absolutely spot on. So well done, Harbour. Yep. Um, and that brings us on then to this week, doesn't it? Because we're at Steel Park. Yes, football at Steel Park in March. Yep. The only game. The only game in March at Steel Park. For the, for the first, first team. team. And um, there will be one person not there, won't there? Will there? Yeah. Ex-club captain. 
Michael Jacklin. Michael Jacklin. So we'll get a chance to say on here. Uh, thanks for all the good times, Jacko. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jaffa, well done. Good play. And he's gone to Lincoln. With a chance to go to Wembley by playing in the FA Vars yeah, semi-final. So that, that's Lincoln City, isn't it? Lincoln United. Lincoln United. He's the, gone to United who play in the FA, FA Vars and they play at step five. So, uh, yeah, well done to them and, and uh, all the best. I hope it works out and um, he gets to play under the arch. The march is on. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. He, he's a lovely lad, isn't he? So, yeah. And another shout out, really, because um, as Gary mentioned in his interview, we've had um, two of our young lads, you're probably wondering where they've been, you know, at first team match base, match days. But uh, Ryan Martindale and Shay Brown have been out on loan at Bugbrook. And I do believe that Shay scored for a Bugbrook in a league match. So um, I think where Gary said before he was looking to get them out in step five football, it seems to be that that's happening at this moment in time. Good, good. Uh, other news from around Steel Park. Uh, we mentioned last week uh, the uh, passing of Beth, Bev Ironmonger and uh, details are announced now of his funeral. It will be on the 28th of March. That's a Thursday, the 28th of March, 11 o'clock in Ketron Krem. Uh, receptions at the Corby Conservative Club. Okay. Uh, not a place I like to go, but the coffee's free and I'll drink that. I'm not certainly going to buy a beer there. But uh, um, if you want to say uh, a fond farewell to Bev, uh, that's the day and time to do it. I'm sure I'll pop along there in a Corby Town jumper and uh, pass on my regards. I take it your Tottenham shirt is not a Nike one. No, it's got it's got no. It's um, made by Tottenham Hotspur. It's got no uh, manufacturer uh, on it. Uh, anyways, going back to uh, <laughs> this is the ladies and gentlemen. Those are listening. It's because I won't wear a Nike shirt. Like so, we've all seen the New England shirt this week, haven't we? Yep. Yeah, it's all right. Isn't it? But it's Nike. What my my big problem is? Why is the uh, national team of our country, England, uh, other countries are available, wearing <laughs> wearing a football shirt made in America or made by an American uh, manufacturer. I think it's vile. I think it's disgusting. Don't give your money to the Americans. You know, they, they, let them get on with ruining their country, please. But don't, you know, it's the same with Tottenham and uh, obviously <laughs> Corby Town are affiliated to Nike as well. So that's why I don't have any football kits currently. And they'll probably sting you over 100 quid for it. Yeah, probably. Um, um, I would not pay that much. And uh, I've got a forest shirt. And like I said to Chuck, they had an FA Cup special when I went. I went to watch them twice. I went to Bristol City. I never told you that. No. Um, and it was extra time and all that stuff and whatever. But they had a, a sale on. And they dropped them to £37. And I thought, that's fine. I'll pay that. I know, you know, but um, I know Man City shirts are 120 quid, mm. aren't they? It's not the only thing that's been dropped in Forest recently, is it? Cause four points. Four, <laughs> dropped yeah. four points and in the relegation zone. Appalling! Yeah. Yeah. Just ban Man City! 150, whatever it is, offences. Get them out of the league! Put them in the third division! And I've heard that Chelsea are going to get dot points from next season. That shock, that shouldn't be happening. No. It's happening. Get it done now. Yep. Let's go into the new season without anybody quibbling. Because it's yeah. it, it, could, it won't be the uh, the last team. There'll be another team that comes on. It'll be probably Tottenham, um, hopefully Arsenal. And it will and it's wrong. Get it done with now. The FA are absolutely useless at most things. And give us some money. Get the money running down here in non-league football. It's where it should be. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to sell uh, Morgan Gibbs White now to balance the books. And uh, the the biggest problem that we had was the fact that we held out for Spurs for another 15 million. If we'd taken 35 million at the time, we wouldn't have tipped the balance. Wow. What was that on? Uh, Brendan? Brendan Johnson. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think, you know, you can understand to a point, but, you know, uh, it, we are what we are. My only gripe with it is... We all knew Chelsea's situation before any of this, and they're not going to get points taken off till next year. So that would be my one gripe about it. Well, yeah, again, I mean, you can't blame Forest team. You can't blame the manager. Nope. You can't. You've got to blame the bean counters yep. that are doing the mathematics yep. to say, you know, yep. if this doesn't happen, this may happen. But 
it seems that the rules are so ambiguous that there's no clear point and no clear view as to what might happen in the future if there's a, a situation like that. No, and Leicester City have found a loophole in it because they've been in the Premier League and then the EFL because they were going to get dot points, which would have stung their promotion coming up. But they found a loophole to get away with it. And what is that loophole? Why can't it be used by other teams? Because they've got it's down. Because, yeah, it's because of, you know, and, um, you know, at the end of the day, the well, money the money men at Forest got it wrong. Everyone's got to suffer. And that's the way we are. But we are only one point behind Luton. So, you know, there we are. I mean, the other ring issue with Leicester is, of course, that uh, they were 20-odd uh, points ahead and now they're not. Uh, so they seem to have caused their own problems on the pitch. <laughs> you like that, don't you? No, not really. I want to see Leicester in the Premier League along this forest, you know. But the only team I don't want to see there is Derby. Um, I've got no issue with Leicester, really. <laughs> Uh, right, Derby County. We're we're laughing at you. Um, nice ground though. Horrible. Anyways, we're steering away from Corby <laughs> Town here. We, yeah, so we've gone on a tangent. Let's um let let's go back to that game against Harbour because Corby took the lead midway through the second half. Um, it was a definite penalty. I think you can say that. You've seen the footage. You yeah, I think Tendai had his hand up high, didn't he? So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, I think his hand was up here somewhere. When, uh, you know, yeah, like that. Um, yeah, it was a pen, you know, not a lot you can say. And um, it, I think, it, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've got, no, I don't want to criticise Arbour, but because you're playing at that football pitch, you don't, I found that the, the fans were particularly quiet, but they were shouting all the way through the game. But because they had no stand behind them to send the noise forward, it was just lost in the ether. And I think, you know, I think probably for their own fans, because they've got that little stand um, sponsored by possibly the best Indian restaurant in Market Harbour. That's the avatar. That little stand down the bottom end of the, uh, the pitch. But it's not enough to create a bit of noise. They need to be on the goal, don't they? No. So, no, not um, really. Um, They've got the new stand, which is a nice one, and they've got the little stand as well. But they're like a growing club, aren't they? You know, if you, I don't know what you remember. I remember going for a pre season before, it was like, um, it was just all grass and the pitch was terrible. So the, the amount of improvements yeah. they've made in there is, you know, but some fantastic. And I wish them all the best, actually. I, there you ho go. I hope they, they, they do well for no, the No, I did say that. I, obviously, I hope that they uh, go yeah. on and win the league. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but I have been out on the pitch tonight. It is Thursday. We're playing here Saturday. This will come out on the Monday. I've been on the pitch tonight. It is a bit soft, yeah. but it's 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 great play. And uh, it has been warm. It might have been wet, but it has been warm. And things are growing up and grass is coming up. And uh, I think the pitch will be perfect to play on Saturday afternoon, which we all look forward to and welcome Wolves All Wood for the first time here at Steel Park ever. That's correct. Yep. Ever. Yep. So, yeah. Now, you said that uh, the ladies have had a game called off. Yep. I take it we're all going to have this bit of a problem with the ladies and with the um, with the youth team that um, games are going to be building up towards the end of the season. Yeah, they are. Although the youth team, um, I've got a little bit of information here. The youth team are, going to, are playing tonight as of Thursday. Um, they're away at Rothwell. And they're here again on Monday, the night this podcast comes out. And it's against Rotha Corinthians. I know this because Tiff just sent me a message. Both of them are 7.45 kickoff. And then away to Rawns on the 4th of April. Uh, yeah, away to Rawns on the 4th of April. And then some other news that Tiff shared with me, and I can share with the, you. The 4th of April, what day of the week is that? Um, it'll be a Monday or a Thursday. That youth team that, games. That's bank holiday Monday, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. It'll be the 4th then. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. It's got to um, be. That's, that's Easter Monday. And we're, we've are we got a game here. No, we haven't. Yeah, we no. have. Yeah, it'll be the 4th. It, it, no, it's the 4th. It's got to be the Thursday then. All oh, right. Youth teams only ever play on a Monday or a Thursday right, unless okay. it's so, cup final. Well, it won't be the Monday night after the game here, will it? No, 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 no. I wouldn't have no, so. because youth team aren't here. And that's All my right. next bit of news. The youth team will um, 
the youth team are travelling to the Netherlands, I oh. guess is the right, uh, to play a tournament out there, and that's over the Easter weekend. Oh. I'm not sure who they're playing, um, but uh, Tiff shared that with me this afternoon. So they're away to play in the Netherlands in a tournament over the Easter weekend. They're not going to PSG, are they? Because I don't know. We've got some great links at Corby Town between PSG and Eindhoven, haven't we? Because they've we, played it. Yeah, we've been here. they've been here a few times. So I'll run through them. Rothwell Corinthians on Monday night, which is this 25th. the night this podcast comes out. 25th. And then on the 4th of April, away to Rawns. And then, you know, they've got a tournament in the Netherlands. Excellent. Right then. So that'll keep them happy. We, we should go to that. Oh, it's, yeah, we, we should go on an, an, an OB, an I outside think, broadcast. I think, we, yeah, I think we should have press passes. Yeah. Um, I could have filmed all that. <laughs> and do one of these live at the side of the pitch. Um, but yeah, the Netherlands. Wow. Yeah, and Chuck's going to talk to you a minute because I've got another bit of information what I, I want to find out because it's really, really important because it's something that Phil Toon has asked me and um, I want to promote it for him. So Chuck's going to talk to you about, on that camera. Yeah, about oh. I don't know anything. Gosh. Now we mentioned before. It's just well, I've got something in the back of my head. We mentioned before about old Corby Town badges. Now I have compiled a list and a collection of photographs of these old badges and I, I think I'll just share them out on the social media. I have put a, a picture of this club shop on the social media tonight because it looked good in the sunshine. Hey, and also there's a picture of the pitch as well just to see how good it does look as the sun's coming down over the far stand. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to having football back here at, at Steel Park and uh, after the game here at the weekend, we then are away, and I believe it's Sutton Coalfield Town because that's what Michael told me last week. So, um, yeah, stay tuned here and uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the uh, notification button and the remember button and any other buttons that you can see here on YouTube on our channel, Corby Town TV. Uh, Michael, over to you. Thank you, Chuck. Oh, it's over to me. And by the way, my headphones are still on. And I'm still perfectly well. Don't worry about it. Um, please don't concern. Now, this is the big one. On the 7th of April, okay, Corby Town ladies play here against Crick Athletic. That's at Steel Park. That's at Steel Park. Is that a Sunday? Will, yep. And it will be a two o'clock kickoff. And I'm told the tea bar will be open. Um... Phil's asked me to come up and fill the game, film the game, because it's the top two teams in the league at the moment and we'll have a big say on who gets promoted. Bearing in mind, you have champions and second place go up. And this is a big game, probably their biggest game of the season. And they'd be looking to get as many people up here as possible. And that is on the 7th of April Two o'clock kickoff and it's free entry. There you go. Get up here, support Corby Town ladies, who uh, if they beat Crick, um, will mean that it will put them in a very, very good position. If not to win the league, to certainly be in a favourable oh, position massive. for them. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. I mean, Crick haven't been beaten yet. No, no. So it's a it, it's a tall order, but you know, it is. Well, it's not. I mean, I think Phil's turned it around. The team are dip disciplined. They know how, what they need to do. They know the positions they need to be playing in. And uh, they just need to start on the right foot and don't let the nerves get to them. That's correct, Chuck. I'm just, Come on, the ladies. Um, I'm just checking up to see the state of the table. Um, the state of the table is Crick have played 11 and have got 31 points. Corby have played 12 and have got 30 Desborough played 11 and got 25. So Corbury in a fantastic position. Crick have got a game in hand. So th this game against Crick for Corby is vital. They have yeah. dropped points then, obviously, this season. They're not, they're, they must have drawn one. Oh, drawn one. one. Yeah, drawn 31 yeah, drawn points. One. So, um, yeah, it's possible. A draw, that would be, uh, you know, that would show that Corby Town really have progressed. But I think being at home, uh, th they should be thinking, let's take it to them and take all three points. Yeah, and as just veering back to the youth team slightly, there was a big change in the league. Stamford are now four points ahead. 
Now, Corby, I think, have now got three games in hand on Stamford, but the big change here is that Russian and Diamonds have dropped their first points of the season, uh, which makes a massive difference to what the situation is. And you could say, I mean, Stamford are fantastic because they've played more games, but they have the points in the bag. Russian are going to be playing catch-up, and so are Corby. But the key here is Russian and Corby have to play each other twice. Wow. And I think the last game of the season, Corby played Russian. There you go. So, big games coming up here at Steel Park. Not what we expected at the beginning of the season, quite no. frankly, is it? No. Uh, we expected Corby Town, the first team, to be up there, certainly in a playoff position. That hasn't really played out in the way that we expected it to. But I think now... Um, you know, looking at the performance last week uh, at Harbour and the other performances we've had, it's been a bit topsy-turvy. But now we've got to be thinking about what are we going to be thinking about doing and going forward in the next season. Things are starting to come together. And quite frankly, um, if, the, if the money and the funds are made available and it looks like there's going to be a little bit more available to the club and to the team, that, therefore next season should be in a far better place. Yeah, just like to say on Eugene's behalf, your bricks, you can get the forms in the club shop. I believe they're £95 for a double brick. They are £50 for a single brick. And you can then fill the forms out and I think you email them to the email address. Yeah. I think that's the way you do it. And I've made a little slide and I'm going to put on every one of these and it basically gives you basic information on it. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yes. So the next time you see me, no, I'm, I'm going to be in a cage. Excellent. In a cage with some first team players. Ah, right. So you're going to go and stay with the first team training tonight and talk to a couple of players. And I'm going to go and, um, you know, cry, you. cry myself to sleep. Get a hair. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going there. Yes, they are training and they're saving the pitch. They're not training on the pitch tonight. Ah, right. They're training uh, somewhere else. And I'm not going to give that information away because I'm not. All oh, right. Okay. Here tonight at Lodge Park. And tonight I've got Greg Mills, or everybody knows Millsy. <laughs> um, Greg, welcome back to the club. Thank you. It's it's obviously um, brilliant to be back. It's a club that means a lot to me. Um, some of my best years were here, and obviously, um, I think we all know we've over the years we made some brilliant memories. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, when you left, and we were speaking before, you know, we came on camera here. Um, obviously, you've had difficult injuries. Um, how has that affected you as a footballer? Yeah, I think. Um, Obviously, when I was when I left here, I went to Tamworth, and um, not long after that, I'd, uh, my son was born, which obviously changes everyone's life. And then I'd kind of been playing step two, step three, um, up until a couple of years ago when I did my my ACL um, just after COVID. Actually, um, did a full ACL rupture, uh, a MCL uh, full rupture, and uh, LCL three quarter um so it's a it's a long injury um luckily i was in good hands the person who actually did my um surgery was the same person who did van dykes um so the same quite a lot of people who do that injury don't come back so the fact i've come back is um i'm happy with but now obviously it's just i felt after the injury I'm, my body was breaking down and, and that's quite common after such an injury. Um, so it's been a long road, but I'm, I'm starting to get back to where I was. Yeah, you must be, uh, I mean, written in the stars originally, first game back, you come on as a sub, yeah. Somebody get a pen in the 89th minute. <laughs> yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, I think um, uh, quite a few of you have seen that a few times. Uh, but no, I said when I come, I, I knew that waking up that morning I was going to score. Um, obviously, I was aware that the home form's not been not been great. And I think it was kind of written in the stars that obviously I come back and, and we get our first home win in a while, uh, a clean sheet. I score, last couple of minutes, penalty. Like, yeah, I couldn't have had a, asked for a better return. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, great. Um, as I did with Cal last week, we're going to talk about that year, that <laughs> season that was unforgettable. And yeah. I think people will probably recognise the front three or, you know, the attacking that we had with you and Wilson and... Um, Spence. 
Yeah, Spence as yeah. well, yeah. Um, phenomenal season. Um, is there a lot that you remember about that? I, I mean, you scored a lot of goals that year. I did, I did score a lot of goals. Um, so did so did Spence. And I know uh, up until Spence's um, goal in against Paul, me and him were, were neck and neck. Um so yeah, me and him were going for the golden boot. It was it was a rivalry, but not not it was a it was a rivalry. Me and Spencer, good friends off the pitch as well as on the pitch. So it was a, it was we both wanted to get um, golden boot. We both wanted to push each other on. But yeah, that season, and I've said it. Me and Spence joke about it. I know it sounds crazy for people who don't know the the of the situation. But if you made a film on that, I genuinely believe the fact that we we went and played was it Truro on the Saturday and they turned the lights off in the eighty. Eighth minute, we're two-one up. We've gone back down there and lost. We've then played Weymouth, and I remember scoring in the last couple of minutes against Weymouth, which sent it to the last, the last game of the season. And then the way the last game of the season planned out, where obviously it was, it, they could have had a draw. We needed to win. Um, the, the top two were playing each other on the last day of the season. We've took fifteen hundred, was it? Did we take? Yeah, so we took, we took a ridiculous, ridiculous amount, and and. Um, Nil nil at half time, and then and then obviously we've gone two nil up from a cruising, <laughs> and then it's gone two all, and then obviously we've scored we've scored last minute, and I think it again it's just something that I don't I genuinely don't think I'll ever I'll ever experience again, and I never have since. Yeah, people. When I talk to people, they reckon the most pivotal moment in that season towards the end was your goal at Weymouth. Um, the game was kicking on and we needed a win and you just came up with something that probably only you could do, really. Yeah, no, I think that, to be fair um, to Cal, about two minutes before that, he's blocked one on the line. Um, literally from about two yards out, the guys volleyed it and Cal's threw his body on the line, which epitomises kind of what that team was all about. And then I think from that clearance, it's ended up coming to me. Um and obviously I've managed to, I've, I've managed, and as soon as I hit it, I knew it was in. And I thought, what was that, Eight, 88th, 80, 89th? And I remember, um, I, I won't be able to tell you the player, but one of their players was either suspended or injured, the pool players. And he was, he was watching it with his, with his, um, with some family members or whatever. Obviously, I'm guessing, hoping. So I think the draw still would have meant they won the league or due to goal difference or whatever. Um, and then obviously I scored it and I remember seeing his face and I remember thinking, I think I think that's done them mentally, and then obviously whatever happened happened, and yeah, it was just scenes. It was it was an unforgettable moment. I remember coming back and and the amount of fans we had in the bar. It was just that's for me. That's what Corby's about, and that's what we're trying to do here is get back to them them days. Really, Corby, like I know, shouldn't really be in this league. When you look at the even on even on Saturday against Harbour, the amount of fans were taking, and and it, it's a proper football club, and we need to we need to get back to to back up the leagues where it should be. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether you remember too much about going back to that Weymouth game, right? Yeah. And I might put this clip on here. There was a famous clip that's done the internet. And one of our supporters coming down, they tried to, they tried to, <laughs> I think they tried to grab you and he fell right over the yeah. barrier. And then, have you seen yeah, that? Yeah, I have seen, I have seen that. And I think, uh, to be fair, I think I was doing the Jude Bellingham celebration before Jude Bellingham was obviously was obviously doing it. So, uh, but no, I remember I remember that. I don't remember that at the time, but I remember watching it back and seeing him fair play to him from coming down as fast as he can, and and obviously he ended up going over the hoardings. But that just shows how much it meant, and that just shows that as a club, the fans and the the behind the scenes. The, the fans and the club was all pulling in the same direction. I know it's the club's obviously had some difficult years since since I've left, um, but th for me that just shows what the club is about and what the what the club still is. Okay, Greg, thank you very much. And uh, have you got any message to the fans? No, just obviously this club means so much to me. Um, it's a brilliant club for my family as well. Like it, I've got so many good memories, and hopefully. Um, in the future we can create even more good memories so thank you and thank you to all the fans supporting Here at training on a Thursday night I've managed to call him my second player of the night Joe Butterworth and uh, how's it going? Alright thanks are you? A bit late on a Thursday for my liking but we're here We are indeed yeah you didn't want to come over and do an interview did you? No I'm a bit camera shy I don't really like it but you made me come over, so I've got no choice now, have 
Um, as far as the season's going, I mean, at the start, you know, um, you struggled a bit for injury, didn't you? And uh, got a bit better as the season's gone on. Yeah, I missed um, I missed all of pre-season through an injury which I had from last season. For, I played on it last season from about December and I didn't really know too much about it. So I missed all the pre-season trying to get it right and then I realised it's something that I've just got to sort of deal with forever now sort of thing in my knee. And then I sort of I come back okay for a couple of games and then you could sort of tell that I'd missed all the pre-season. And then... <clears throat> I had a good, like, good minutes, got myself fairly fit. And then up until the last, probably I'd say the last six weeks, I've been fully fit. And then from before those six weeks, for about probably two months, 10 weeks, I've been, I had a problem in my left groin and then a problem in my right groin. I'd just been playing on it and it started to, like, affect how I was playing, essentially. But over the last six weeks, I'm fully fit now for hopefully the rest of the season. Having said that, if you scored two goals like you like you have done and not been fully fit, I mean, especially the one at Gresley, I remember. Yeah, that one. I did actually have a bad groin with that one. If I think I scored, and then I had to come off at half time. So that was the one. That was the second groin injury, and that lasted a little while. But yeah, with that goal, um, I had a bad groin. Yeah. What people probably don't know is um, what kind. Of, what other clubs have you played before in the past and have you played under Gary? Yeah, so I started out, I was at Whittlesea, just my local town, um, up until probably 2021. And then I moved to Yaxley. I had probably three, four years there. I won the, the UCL, the division below. And then had two seasons at Step 4 with Yaxley. And then I moved to Stamford for probably six months, and then I went on loan to Bedford where, where Gary was, and then I ended up signing, started well there, and then ended up signing there for the rest of the season. So I had six months there, and then the season after when uh, Gary left, and I stayed there for the rest of the season with uh, G, who's here now. And then we got ended up, when we won the league, we got relegated the next year and then followed Gary to, to here. Always difficult, isn't it? When you go up, you get promotion. It's never easy, no matter what league you go to. No, I felt like we, we started okay, actually. As, um, I think there's a big difference um, between step four and three. Just every game's a little bit relentless. And we started off okay. And we sort of, we was doing all right. And then it got to about just before Christmas and we just couldn't seem to get out of a little bit of a rut. And then it just carried on from there. And we ended up getting relegated, unfortunately, yeah. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the point where we say uh, Rivadechi. Um, so we are going to be no more for the 50th episode. And uh, we'll count that down. We'll have to bring uh, poppers and sparkly things and balloons for the uh, 51st, 52nd. If anybody, what should we do? Should we invite people in for the 52nd episode? Mm, nah. So, <laughs> should we get somebody special in? Maybe get Stevie in. Well, possibly. Yeah. Hasn't been in for a long time. We need to speak to the chairman once in a while. But um, we'll stay tuned for next week. There'll be another one uh, coming your way before we get that far down the road. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll say goodnight for the time being. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the uh, notification button. Uh, Michael, well done on those interviews out in the cage. Uh, I hope you stayed warm, and because uh, it's warm in here and it's not so warm out there. And if you are liking the interviews with the first team players, something that we haven't done all season, we really think we should do more, please leave your comments, you know. Uh, and, and especially if uh, there's any particular player that you would like us to talk to. Yeah, I mean, Chuck's not available later on in the evening. That's why I'm doing it, um, because I've got to do it when the players train. They train much later in the evenings. It's now three o'clock in the morning and uh, <laughs> we need to go home to bed. Yep. So uh, with that, take care for now. We'll see you soon. Call Thank the you. Town TV.